Hey, in this video, I, this is Brandon Kish. I just wanted to uh, discuss maybe a few tips with you guys that I've learned along the way with wiring this thing. Um, first thing is, is you guys are going to need a voltage regulator, which is this guy and this guy here, little square things. Pick them up at Radio Shack for like two, three bucks maybe. Um, and you want, if you want to be able to adjust your voltage, say for your motor, so how fast your motors are turning, or if you want to be able to make sure that you're getting 5 volts, you might want to look for something like a potentiometer, and you want to get a variable voltage regulator. So once again, it's a variable voltage regulator, and uh, you can get it if they don't have the 5 volt variable voltage regulator, you can get the 12 volt. So I believe the 5 volt is a LM318, and the 12 volt is a 3 LM317. Um, and I believe the last letter is C for both of those, so it would be LM318C. Uh, and those are voltage regulators um, that you can basically, you know, use 9 volts or use whatever voltage you want up to 32 volts, and it will bring the actual voltage down to uh, 5 volts. And another note about the voltage regulators is it's normal for them to heat up. The more voltage you send to them, the more they're going to heat up. So you're not going to want to send a whole lot of voltage to them. Like say if you send 9 volts and you're trying to drop it down to 5 volts, you're going to feel a, a heat difference. You're going to feel it heat up. Uh, that's a normal thing, but if you send too much voltage, you'll, it will get really hot and you might have to do other things to it. Anyways, just a side note. The other thing to note about uh, the voltage regulators is that they have a, a drop voltage. So basically a voltage that they require to actually run. Uh, if you will. So say you want this voltage regulator to put out 5 volts. Well, it, it requires about 1.5 volts. The LM318, uh, or LM318C from Radio Shack requires about 1.5 volts at uh, 1.5 amps. So what this means is to make sure you're always getting 5 volts, you at least have to have 6.5 volts. You can go higher than that, but you, you want at least 6.5 volts going into it. Uh, some other just quick notes is I used LEDs to indicate when my sensors were being pressed. Uh, and I used the, the program to indicate, to actually turn on that light whenever it was doing like say an algorithm if you for instance if you had like two bump sensors and when those two bump sensors are pressed you had it turn right well you could also have the two it tell the two LEDs to turn on too so that way you know like okay your your program is at that point where it, the the PIC is thinking that both are pressed so this could help you troubleshoot a lot of times um, just the LEDs using them to, to kind of see what the PIC is seeing or what the PIC is sensing. Uh, another little thing too is you'll see these blue things here. These are capacitors. And if you notice, I actually put them between the positive and negative leads of the motor. And the purpose of this is, is the motor uh, causes a lot of uh, quote-unquote noise in the system, which means that the, the voltage is jumping around a lot and it's, it's not a steady voltage. So a capacitor uh, can kind of regulate that voltage and help take out some of that noise. Although it's not going to take out all of it. So um, one thing someone actually mentioned to me, and at the time it didn't really occur to me to how valuable it was, but it's actually a really great idea. And they say for people that are going to run off of one battery pack, which that's what we're doing, we're actually using um, four, four AA and two AA, but they're all ran to basically run to about 9 volts, 8, 9 volts, and uh, they're going to, uh, what someone recommended is, is you can have your sensors read when your motors are off, and then turn your sensors off, and then have your motor go. So what that's going to do is, is, because you're turning your motors off when you read your sensors, you're not getting all that feedback from the motors, it's not distorting your signal. But if you're using something like bump sensors, this really isn't that uh, important. It really doesn't matter too much because as long as it's above a certain voltage, it's going to read that, you know, it's it's on. But for people using, like, uh, I know a lot of people are using sonar 
and infrared sensors, this could be a tr big problem uh, if you're using one battery pack or sometimes even if you're using two separate battery packs uh, because we're running through our motor chip here uh, you might still even get motor noise through your system and that will affect uh, your your sonar reading or your analog reading uh, because it affects the PIC and, and the, the, I, I know why but that's more technical stuff than I think uh, I really want to go into with this video but um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is if you see here I have these other two black boxes here and what those are is they're called transistors and they're they're basically an electrical switch uh, basically uh, when I turn on a pin on the PIC this switch turns on and uh, the reason why I have those is actually for my sensors um, my sensor which I got here on the side and I've also got one on the bottom here and uh, the reason why I have the switches is to save power uh, because what you'll find is your sensors will actually drain a lot of power out of your batteries and in fact that's why I chose to go with the double A's to get 9 volts as opposed to like a 9 volt battery because if you do the research you'll find out that the uh, the double A's have about 2700 uh, amper hours as opposed to the 9 volts only have about, I want to say, 600 uh, amper hours. So that's quite a bit of difference. And what an amper hour is, is basically how much current you could draw. So, uh, you know, any device on your, your circuit is going to take current. And it, it basically tells you how much current you can pull out of these batteries and for how long. Um, and if you want to understand that better, do a little research on the internet do about amper hours and how it affects the batteries and your current draw and whatnot. Um, let me see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to recommend to you guys. Um, can't think of anything at the moment, but if I think of anything, I'll kind of uh, I'll throw that out there in another video at some point. Um, but for now... I think that's it as far as the wiring goes. So I will see you guys in another video.